So we're gonna be talking about the difference between a block and file-based storage, the differences between a SAN and a NAS, and how to connect your Synology NAS and use the storage of your Synology NAS on a VMware environment using NFS or iSCSI. Now, before we do get into that, if you are new, really appreciate you stopping by. We release videos on a whole bunch of tech. So if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe because that would be great and you'll keep up to date with everything that we are releasing. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into my Synology NAS and we're gonna start giving you a bit of a foundation and some good practices around why you should be setting things up one way or the other. We'll then give you a definition about the differences between NFS and iSCSI. We'll then go and configure it on our Synology NAS and then configure it on our ESXi and get the two talking to each other. Two things that you need for this, you need a VMware environment. ESXi or vCenter, you need a Synology NAS and you need them both to be accessible to each other on the network. So if there's any firewalls or any funny routing between these two devices, get rid of that or get that sorted. You need both of them to be able to communicate to each other to be able to get this to work. So the NAS that we're gonna be using is a Synology DS1621 Plus NAS. Logged in to a web interface. This is the portal which I can go in. This is the operating system for the Synology NAS itself. And from within here, I can actually go and configure everything that I need. So there's a, a section here around storage management. There's a section here around SAN management. So we are gonna be covering these areas today. Now, before we go into configuring this specifically on the Synology side, let's talk a little bit about our VMware environment. We are running here VMware's ESXi 6.7. Of course, if you're running version 7 or a different version altogether, these steps are generally going to be the same regardless of which recent-ish version of VMware ESXi you are running. Now, of course, you can do this, of course, in a vCenter environment. As long as you're connecting directly to your ESXi host, you can then get your ESXi host talking to your Synology NAS. Now the key here of course is to make sure that both your Synology NAS and your ESXi hosts are accessible to each other on the network. Now they don't have to be in the same subnet range, they could be in different subnets if you've segregated your network that way, but as long as there are routes, as long as there is a connection between the two, then you're gonna ensure that your connections between the NAS and your ESXi hosts are correct and can be established. So in here, you'll see that I've already got a number of VMs listed. Okay, most of these are turned off. I do have a new one that's here, but we'll go through the steps on how to create a VM in a little while and then connecting it to our storage. Let's swing back to our NAS. Here is our NAS. Now we're gonna assume that you've already configured your NAS accordingly, that your NAS already has all the disks in there. They've been rated together. You've got relevant pools, maybe a volume, but we'll cover that just a little bit. But if you're doing this in a production, in a test environment, we wanna make sure that our NAS has already been configured, set up, and all the disks have been configured accordingly as well. So you can then use it to connect to over NFS or iSCSI. Now, before we do get into this and how to configure it ourselves on our NAS, let's go through a little bit of an overview around the specific differences around these different protocols. A NAS is a network attached storage, that's what it stands for. And a SAN is a storage area network. Now, hey, they sound fairly similar. Physically, when you look at a SAN, when you look at a NAS, they're gonna sort of look the same. And some people will say, oh, but isn't just a NAS normally a little bit smaller and a SAN is very big? It really depends on the scenario, but not always the case. It's actually talking about the underlying technology that is used that determines if it's a NAS or a SAN, not so much the size. Let's first define what a NAS is. So NAS, Network Attached Storage. This is a storage device, can come in two bay, can come in four bay, could come in five bay, could come in eight bay, 16 bay, 32 bay, etc. They come in all shapes and sizes. And inside of these physical units, they are containing hard drives. They could be two and a half inch, three and a half inch hard drives. They could be SATA, they could be SAS, they could be flash. They could be different sorts of combinations of those, different sizes, different speeds. At the end of the day, they're hard drives sitting inside a storage device. This storage device has a lot of connections on the back of it. You're gonna have ethernet connections. You're gonna maybe have some USB connections. You're gonna have some other connections that let you connect NASs together if you wanna sort of do expansions and all of that. And that's really, really cool. This is what's called a file-based solution, a file-based system. A SAN is a block-based solution. So they're the two main things that are different there. File-based, uh, we are now talking here the same way that a standard 
file server would work. If you've got a whole bunch of files, you've got a whole bunch of data, and that's gonna be using some protocols in the background. Those protocols are gonna be SMB or SIFS, KIFS share. It could be NFS or an AFP format. So there's various protocols, but let's just focus, for example, on, a, on SMB. Well, on a NAS, essentially all you're doing is you're creating a platform for that thing to happen. You set it up, you configure a RAID, you set it up with RAID so that there's multiple levels of redundancy. If a disk fails and you won't lose data, you're gonna create storage pools and then create essentially shares on your NAS, shares that you are then sharing out to the network. You're gonna add particular permissions onto that so that specific users or, spe or specific computers on a network can access it, they can connect to it, and then you can get the data that is sitting on the NAS. And the NAS, essentially, you just use it as a file repository. Now, SAN, what is a SAN? Storage Area Network. A SAN is block-based, as we said. So unlike a NAS, where you create your RAID, and your storage pool, and then you create your shares, which are SMB or SIF shares, right? So you can share on the network over that protocol. On a SAN, you're also creating your RAID and some storage pools, but now you're creating what's called LUNs. Stands for logical unit number. And really what it is, it's just a container. It's a block container. You can't really navigate to that LUN. You can't just copy data to a LUN the same way that you can over the network to a SMB share that you've created on a NAS. Generally, what you're gonna be using this for is for hosting something, maybe such, such as a virtualization uh, environment. Maybe using something like VMware or Citrix, and you've got a whole bunch of VMs on there. And those VMs physically are gonna be sitting on a SAN somewhere, and they're using the block-based technology. We talked about the SIF share and the SMB share and NFS and these other protocols on the NAS side, well on the block side, you're gonna have iSCSI or fiber channel. You've also got fiber channel over ethernet, but we're gonna be just focusing on the iSCSI and the fiber channel here. And what you're gonna be doing is when you create a LUN on a SAN, you give it a protocol. What protocol do you wanna be running over? Let's say you wanna be running over a fiber channel network. Well, a fiber channel network is very, very different to a standard ethernet network. If you think about a standard ethernet switch where you're plugging in all of your network cables, uh, sort of the same. You may have a fiber channel network which has a fiber channel switch with fiber channel cables running into it instead of a network cable. You can also get a fiber channel card for your computer, for your server, or you can use iSCSI and iSCSI can run over an ethernet. So a normal network cable, it's actually gonna be passing an iSCSI packet protocol over that ethernet cable. And all I'm doing is on the SAN, I'm initiating my LUN to be a iSCSI protocol. When you're creating your LUN, you may be able to actually say, I only want these computers to be able to get access to that LUN. And then those servers will have to have a iSCSI initiator set up, and then they can actually go and talk on the block-based LUN on the SAN, and then connect to it that way. Back on our NAS, let's click on the left top menu, main menu, and select storage manager. Now in here, I've got a bit of an overview. I've got a couple of disks in here. My NAS is called Lab Demo, and I've already got a volume created. So if you don't have a volume created, you'll need to go and create yourself your volume. And of course, by doing that, you've already gone and configured your storage pool in a RAID. In my case, I'm using Synology Hybrid RAID, which is the SHR. This is essentially a RAID configuration developed by Synology, and it's great. And then I've got my volume in here within that particular storage pool. If you do need to create yourself a new volume, you can simply select Create, Create Volume right in here. We're gonna use an existing storage pool. Again, if you've got more than one, you'd select your relevant storage pool. You'll see that under the total capacity. Here is the amount of capacity that I've got, and how much available capacity that I've got. So what I can do is I can say that my volume needs to be, we'll keep the file system as standard, next, and apply. So this is gonna create a new volume that is one terabyte large. And it's of course gonna be sitting on top of my storage pool in this RAID configuration. You'll see that there it is being created. We'll now go back into our start menu and click on control panel. From within here, we're gonna select shared folder. Now specifically here to our NFS share is we're now gonna create ourselves a shared folder and making sure that it's available on the NFS protocol, which we then we can use to connect to our VMware. So we're gonna create a new shared folder right in here and I'm gonna call this VMs. So all my VMs live in here. 
We're gonna leave everything as standard. You can go and change this and customize this as you so need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my username Emilio read write access and save. Now this is just a share that is sitting on top of my volume, which is sitting on top of my storage pool. And of course this can grow, this can shrink as needed. Now by default, NFS cannot be used just yet. If I go into edit into here, and you'll see on the very far right, I've actually got a new tab here called NFS permissions. It says here, the NFS service is not available. Please go to NFS service to enable it. So you can find that area by going into the file services area right here. Here are all the protocols that can be used for that particular share that you've just created. SMB, AFP, FTP, Rsync, etc. So they can all be used, but the one of course that we're concerned about and what we're gonna be connecting to our VMware environment is NFS. So we're gonna select that and we're gonna say enable and then we click on apply. So NFS is now turned on. That's all that we've done. We've just turned it on. We haven't actually applied it to that share just yet. So let's go back into the shared folder, into volume, we're gonna select edit, NFS permissions, we're gonna go create. Here, we now put in the host name or the IP of the devices that we want to actually use this share. So this is where you now have to get the IP address of your ESXi host. You essentially establish a connection directly from this share, this NFS share, to your ESXi host. So if you've got more than one ESXi host that you want to use this NFS share, you'll have to add each of the different IP addresses or host name so that you can actually connect those two together. So here's my IP address, making sure that the privileges are read and write because if it's not read and write, then your VMware will not be able to write data onto it. So we're gonna leave that as read write and everything else will leave as the default and save. That is now ready to go from an NFS perspective. Now, what you will need to note is the IP address of your Synology NAS. So in my case, my Synology NAS is 172.16.1.49. So we're now gonna log into our VMware environment and connect that NFS share to our ESXi host. Within here, we're gonna go into the storage area. You'll see that in here is where you control and manage all of your data stores. I've already got two data stores in here, but in our case, we need to connect a new data store. We need to create a new data store. We're gonna be calling it the same thing, VMs. The data store that we see right here will actually be connected and using the share that we've created on our NAS. Let's go and select new data store. Create new VMFS, add, expand a VMFS, or mount an NFS data store. Now the top three are relevant to iSCSI, which we'll cover in a little bit. We're gonna be creating a VMFS data store using the iSCSI protocol, but in our case, we're gonna select mount DFS data store. Now we're just mounting a DFS share, which will be our data store we're gonna select next. Now we give our data store a name. I'm gonna call it exactly the same as what I've called it previously. Now we connect to the NFS server, which essentially is your NAS. So your NAS is now acting as an NFS server. So add the IP address of your NAS. Now we put in the NFS share. Now we've got your VMware environment pointing to our NAS's IP address. Now what is the NFS share? It's not just VMs, you've got to give it the full path, which includes the volume name. The easiest way to find what this path is, is to go into edit, go into the NFS permissions area, and down the bottom you'll see it says forward slash volume one, forward slash VM. So that's the path that we need to enter into here. The NFS version will remain consistent because that's what we set it up as on our NAS. We do next, a bit of a summary, and then finish. You see it says NFS data store VM successfully mounted. And here is our data store. Now this data store is connecting directly over that NFS protocol from our Synology NAS. And now the next step is to simply go and create a new VM. So let's just go to the simple steps, create a new virtual machine. My test VM will leave everything the same. We'll build our, our Windows Server 2016 or a different version. Next. Now, where is this VM going to physically sit? And of course, in our case, it's VMs. And you'll see right there, it's NFS protocol. So it's gonna be using that VMs. Next. This now allows you to customize your VM how you see fit, adding CPUs, adding memory, changing your hard drive capacity. And next. Summary of what's gonna happen, and then we finish it. Now here's our new VM, VM test VM. That's great, it's now ready to go. So now you simply would go and install your Windows or your Linux or whatever sort of VM you've got in how to build that VM. If you are interested, you can go into storage. Here is our VM's data store. We can right click and select browse. 
here it is. Here's the folder called My Test VM, and here is our VMDK file, which of course is the main file that is used for storing that data. And that of course will look the same on our NAS. If we log back into our NAS, go into our file station, here is our new share called VMs, and here is our My Test VM with the relevant files within it. Now the process for iSCSI is slightly different. Of course, this is block-based while NFS is file-based. So if you haven't gone and created yourself a volume yet, you need to go create yourself a volume where it acts as the container where you're gonna go and create the LUNs, which will now be block-based using iSCSI. On the top left-hand corner, click on the main menu and go down to SAN Manager. And from within here, you'll see that I already have a single LUN. My LUN's already been created. It's called LUN-1. And what we need to do is now create a second LUN, which we can then share out on our network and then use that LUN to be able to store data onto it. Now, unlike NFS, of course, the LUN here is going to be block-based and you're gonna be connecting it over this VMFS process that we looked at before on the VMware side of things to be able to connect to now a iSCSI connection, okay? So we're gonna go into our LUN area right over here and select create. Let's give it a more meaningful name. We'll call it LUN VM, such as that. We'll put this LUN on our volume two. And how big do we want this LUN to be? Of course, this is gonna be directly connected to a data store that we'll create on VMware. So let's do a 200 gig LUN. We then got thick and thin provisioning. Thick being that you will allocate the entire 200 gig to this particular LUN and it'll use it all up straight away while thin, while you only allocate theoretically the whole 200, but it'll only use that capacity as it needs to. So for our case, we're just gonna select thick provisioning. In this case, we're not gonna be using fiber channel because we don't have any available on this Synology NAS, but you can use it if you did have it. But in this scenario, we're gonna be selecting our iSCSI. Who needs to get access to this particular LUN. Is it all or is it custom? All saying that grant read write permissions to all hosts and initiators by default. Custom is you set permissions for each host. Initiators not added as a host are not allowed to access the LUN. So it really depends on how secure you want to be. I generally recommend going custom because with custom you can specifically input the IPs of those computers, those hosts, those servers that you want to get access to it. We're now going to select add new host. In here we're going to now call it something relevant. I've just called it ESXi1, which is the name of the host, the VMware host that we are using. Operating system is VMware. What we're gonna now do is we're now gonna go into our VMware environment. We now select adapters. We now need to configure an iSCSI initiator on our VMware side. Essentially the initiator needs to be done on both sides and then you get them talking to each other. We're gonna select configure iSCSI. We're gonna select enabled. It's now gone and pre-configured a whole bunch of things in here for me automatically. We also have this IQN, which is a unique number, which is what's gonna be used to communicate between the SAN and our VMware environment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna copy this IQN, and then down the bottom, we're gonna select add dynamic target. We're now gonna input the IP address like so. Save configuration. We now have an iSCSI software adapter right here. Great, that's now done. Let's go back to our SAN. Under the add initiator, we now paste that IQN that we had before. So with that host now added, we can now select the permissions to be read and write because we of course want a connection both ways to be able to read and to write to this particular LUN, to this particular iSCSI LUN. Select next. A summary of what's gonna happen. And here it is. We've obviously got our previous LUN one and here's our new LUN VMs. Next step, let's go back to our VMware. So with the adapter now done, we go back into our data stores area. Now, of course, we've got three data stores here. We've got 100 data store, primary data store, and VMs data store. The top one being a VMFS, and the next two being NFS, which of course are file-based, VMFS being our block-based. So we're now gonna select new data store from within here. And rather than selecting mount NFS data store, we're now gonna go and create a new VMFS data store. Next. Now, good sign straight away. The following devices are unclaimed and can be used to create a new VMFS data store. You'll see that it's actually found our iSCSI disk of 200 gig. If for whatever reason you're in this page and it's blank, then something's gone wrong. You've got to go back to your iSCSI initiator on your VM, ensure that you've got that IQN number assigned 
between the two and ensuring that the IP addresses can see each other as well. We now give our data store a relevant name, VMs More. How big do you want it to be? How big do you want the data store to be? Because you don't have to use all of it. You can only use a portion of it if you so choose to. Summary and then finish. And there we now have a VMs More data store, which is a VMFS data store using that iSCSI initiator. Synology talking to VMware is now done and hopefully this worked for you. Why don't you let us know in the comments whether it worked, whether it didn't work. Hopefully it did work. But hey, look, other than that, as I said at the start, we're a YouTube channel that do a lot of things on tech. So why don't you subscribe, click on the button on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Like this video if you did like it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. See ya.